Hello everyone, welcome to my your programming club. Today we will be solving another daily lead for challenge and the challenge name is soup servings. So the challenge statement is like this. There are two types of soup type A and type B. Initially we are given n ml of each soup and there are four kind of operations that we can perform on these two types of soups uh, in one operation you can either take out or you can say serve 100 ml of soup a and 0 ml of soup b or you can serve 75 ml of soup a and 25 ml of soup b 50 ml of soup a or 50 ml of soup and 50 ml of soup b and the fourth option you have is 25 ml of soup A and 75 ml of soup B. Also, it is mentioned we serve some soup, we give it to someone and no longer have it. Once you serve it to someone, your, your uh, initial quantity of soup will be decreased by that much amount and the amount which you will serve to a person each turn you will choose from these four operations after at each point of serving we will choose among these operations and probability of choosing these operations is equal so uh, they are they are equally likely events and probability is 0 0.25 and the remaining volume of the suppose uh, uh, for example let's say you were having 50 ml of the soup and let's say not 50 you let's say 60 ml of the soup you decide to serve 25 ml now the remaining will be Forty, thirty-five, and then if you decide to again serve twenty-five ml, it will be ten ml. So this quantity is remaining, but there is no such operation that is having ten ml a serving size. So what you will do, you will just serve it anyway. If the there is any remaining uh, quantity of the soup that is uh, less than the serving size, then it will also be counted in the uh, number of serves that you will make. So it will it will also be counted as a serve i hope it's clear to you and if the remaining volume of the soup is not enough to complete this is the same thing that i have just told you is not enough to complete the operations we will serve as much as possible when we will stop this procedure when both of the soups quantities are empty let's say a first becomes empty and b is remaining let's say it's having 25 ml we'll continue till both of them become empty and once it happens we'll stop uh, also it is uh, given as a note that 100 ml of soup b serving size is not there as you can see 100 ml of serving size of a in combination of 0 ml of soup b is there but 100 ml of soup b with a, with any combination of soup a serving is not there so this is to be noted so what we have to do is we have to return the probability that the a uh, soup will be empty first plus half the probability that 
a and b become empty at the same time what we have to return uh, let's denote p a as the probability that a will become empty first and let denote p intersection b uh, they will become empty together or say at the same time let me quickly change the color yeah uh, and we have to return this quantity uh, this value return this value as our answer now let's look at the constraints part constraints n n size here is pretty big n is of order 10 raised to power 9 so input size is of order 10 raised to power 9 and also i must mention that n initially both soaps a and b are having n quantity and then we have to return this value so this n is n will be given to you what will be given given things will be only value of n and you have to perform those four operations so uh, what will be a brute force way to approach this problem a brute force way would be for let's say for let's consider a single soup as of now uh, let's consider the soup A at each instance uh, of serving uh, we will be having four choices and let's say we pick this choice let's say it was 25 ml 75 100 and what was the other one uh, 25 75 50 100 okay we missed 50 let's say i decided to go for the 25 now this 25 will again be having four choices and it will continue like this so we are having exponential time we will if we uh, go, go on go on try, of trying out all the choices we will be having exponential time complexity time complexity will be exponential and for an input size of 10 raised to power 9 it will give you tle because only 10 raised to power 8 operations are allowed in one second and those of you who do not know how the time complexity of accepted solution varies according to input size i will provide a link for it A article describing or a blog describing this concept then you will be having a clearer idea how to analyze which time complexity will be required to solve a particular problem based on the input size of the constraints of the problem so here even if we go for the linear time complexity then also this 10 raised to power 9 is bigger than 10 raised to power 8 then also it will give tle so how will we doing optimizing this brute force approach in order to get a uh, accepted solution how will we optimizing it if you carefully observe uh, let's say initial quantities were 50 and 50 mm. let's say you decide to 
okay let's say it's 100 for example and it's also 100 let's say you decide to take what are the four combinations let me quickly check okay these are the four quantities now let's say you perform a operation and somehow you end up getting 50 comma 50 in both of the soups now say you uh, you decided to move another uh, choice path and here also you end up getting 50 comma 50 so you will be calculating for this combination once and again you will be calculating for this floor uh, combination so there are overlapping sub problems these problems are a uh, small part of uh, this major problem uh, so there are overlapping sub problems also you may notice that if we uh, hear the solution for let's say small problems solution of small problems can be combined to get solution for larger one so this satisfies the criteria for optimal substructure so those of you who are not aware what these things these two conditions are i'll provide a link for them also you can link for of the article de describing these two conditions basically these are the conditions of applying dynamic programming over a problem what dynamic programming essentially is what we'll be doing is we'll storing our result for each combination of soups a and b uh, let's call this combination as uh, let me quickly change another color as state soup states for each of the soup state by soup state mean i mean uh, what is the current quantity of the both soups remaining let's say a comma b then this is a soup state so for each of them we will be storing their uh, calculated result and when we encounter the same soup state again same soup state again then we'll not doing any calculation we'll just uh, returning their uh, pre-calculated soup state and this is how this is how we will avoid exponential time complexity of the solution now even after avoiding exponential time complexity the time input size is still large even for a linear one uh, what we will be doing is uh, if you uh, let's say observe uh, this is the first optimization first optimization on brute force and this i will be explaining about the second optimization pardon me if some spelling is incorrect i hope it does not affect your understanding of the problem second optimization on brute force 
what you will do is uh, here it's mentioned that 100 ml serving of V is not existing so as your input size increases let's say it goes to a large quantity then you will observe that you you can have a dry run also or let's say you pick some 10 raised to power 5 quantity as the input size as the n value then you will observe as the input size increases this result that we are required to return uh, what what we were required to return this quantity this quantity approaches to 1 so as it approaches to 1 we can safely we can simply found, find a threshold after which the answer will be 1 so I tried out a few combinations and I found out that see uh, what was the quantity let me quickly check 3 to 5 so 3 to 7 5 was the quantity uh, after which uh, this was the so, and initial soup serving initial soup quantity of, of each soup after n value increase beyond this uh, you will get one as your answer what what value will be one again i will uh, be telling you this value will approach to one this value this whole value this value probability that a will end first plus half of the probability that both of them will be ending together so this will approach to one so these are the two optimizations that we will be making and since this uh, what was the threshold uh, this is the threshold since it's very much lesser than 10 raised to power 8 so you will get a accepted solution so these will be the two optimizations that you will be making on the brute force one is of uh, saving extra work that you will be doing using dynamic programming or say uh, this type of dynamic programming is called memoization and also I will be providing a link for dynamic programming article those of you who are new to dynamic programming can explore this article and then uh, they will be able to understand uh, the concepts discussed in this approach so first optimization will be dynamic programming next optimization will be uh, deciding a threshold where the value will uh, approach to after which the value will uh, always be one what is the whose value will be one again i am explaining this this probability of a plus probability of a intersection b by 2 will be uh, one so let's move to the coding part I hope till now it's clear to you if it's still not clear it will be more clear in the coding part now let's move to the coding part so here is the threshold value also if you are declaring a memoization array or say vector this is for storing calculated states if you are declaring a vector of let's say uh, 10 raised to power 6 size then it would be fine but if it exceeds that size uh, it will give you memory limit exceeded 
so i found out on quora that uh, this is the maximum size if uh, of an integer array that is allowed in online judges if it's declared globally or if it's declared locally then the maximum size allowed is 10 is to power 6 so first i tried out with 1000 but it gave wrong answer so i tried out with 320 3275 and it got accepted so this is the threshold value this is the uh, let me quickly zoom out and so that you will be able to see a larger portion of the code yeah it will be fine i think so wh what this is this is threshold after which probability of a plus probability of a intersection b let's denote intersection by this carrot symbol uh, probability of a intersection b divided by 2 this whole thing will approach to 1 will approach to 1 so we will simply be returning if the input size is larger than this we will simply be returning one and this is for storing the calculated substates by substates i mean the quantities of subs remaining a and b let's say these are the remaining quantities okay this is the simple recursive function that we are uh, in which we what we are doing is we are checking for all possible servings uh let's say state can uh, have let's say the given state is a and b then there are four options for this state and we will be iterating over we'll be iterating over iterating for all possible operations on the current state current loop state so these will be the four operations and we will be checking all of them and once we have checked what we will do is we will this is the probability of selecting this soup state a comma b uh, actually this is not the uh, this is the probability that is given it's given that uh, when you are arriving at a soup state it's equally likely all the soup states are having equally likely uh, probabilities so we'll be multiplying 25 0.25 to the current substrate and if it happens that you have seen such substrate before you will simply return the substrate that is pre-calculated you will not do extra work for it this is to avoid the extra work so if it happens that both of them becomes empty then the probability will be 1 and since we are required to give only half of it half of the probability will give 1 divided by 2 0 0.5 and if that's the if, if it's the case that a becomes empty first then these two cases are also favorable cases so we will simply be returning 1 and if b becomes empty first then uh, you will not be returning anything except zero because it's not a favorable case uh, you may also ask why we are checking for the negative values uh, we are checking for the negative values because this thing was given if the remaining volume uh, where it was uh, yeah if the remaining volume of the soup is not enough to complete the operation 
we will still serve as much as possible so we will be able to still perform the operation in, in case it is lesser than the operation uh, serving size then all its value will be a negative number so we are checking for that case also that's why we are including negative signs in these three checks so i hope the uh, solution is clear to you if you still have some doubts feel free to ask them in the comment section thank you for watching thank you